From Deborah, the fruit and veg you grow, do you stick to the same varieties each year? And if so, which do you grow? Looking at seed catalogs at the moment and so many varieties to choose from. Hello. Hello, Deborah and Trent. How you doing? Hope you're keeping well. Um, yeah, do you know, I think the best thing for you to do is get a mixture of, of seeds, get, get your sort of your carrots and, and everything, all your different seeds and all that, get some brassicas and um, just give them a go, start them off because what works for someone really well tends not to work for others and I think that soil conditions and area of where you're growing it um, makes a difference as well. Just for example, I cannot grow Brussels sprouts to save me life. I struggle with parsnips, but when I speak to others, they're pulling out whopping great big parsnips like that. Their sprouts are doing lovely, but they can't grow a carrot. But yeah, I'm, I'm okay growing carrots here. So yeah, there, there is a lot of veg that we don't grow because we just don't get on with it. So just I'll, I'll just get a mixture of seeds if you're starting off. Find out what works best for you and then just keep keep that going. We save our seeds as well a lot now. We don't buy that many seeds, but if we do buy seeds, we get it from a company on eBay called Premier Seeds Direct. And they are very cheap and they give you a lot of seeds. Instead of getting like about... Thompson and Morgan or whatever. Yeah, yeah Thompson and Morgan and places like that. You, you buy it, you spend about three quid. You get two seeds. Yeah, you, you, get, you don't get many seeds, but um, yeah. with these you'll get like a thousand seeds or something silly like that. Yeah, they also sell some really quite wacky stuff that's, you know, it's nice to, sell, uh, to, to grow different things that you can't necessarily get in the supermarket, isn't it? Yeah, unusual veg. Yeah, and like different colours of normal things, like the purple carrots. And yeah, mainstream veg. Yeah, yeah. Can drive you mad. <laughs> yeah, which is right, it's just quite so long. Okay, yeah. next question from Nigel. I like this one. You're always working, cooking, cleaning, gardening and looking after the animals. My question is, does your wife realise how lucky she is to have you? Also, does she ask you to wear the garlic bra occasionally? <laughs> Do you want to answer that one? No, you feel free. Right then, <laughs> Vicky does a lot of the fostering work in fact she does all of the fostering work, she'll do all of the meetings around fostering because we foster children. Um, she will do all of the paperwork, she does all the expenses, claims, which pretty much is a job within itself and she also deals with the selling of, of things on eBay. What else do you do? Quick, help me out. <laughs> I do loads of things like running around after the kids. But, yeah, she, yeah. she'll... Back. I'll do most of the... Yeah, if Sophie and James want to go out yeah. somewhere, she'll, she'll drive them here, there and everywhere. Yeah, um, yeah and, and my job and really is... And I also is... do do a, a share of the cooking and the cleaning and the gardening. Yeah. <laughs> Not as much as you in terms of the garden. I enjoy but... cooking. Yeah. I, 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 there's nothing better than just sort of um, growing the veg in the garden and then bringing it in fresh and cooking it straight away. It's it makes just... it into the house. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. It is amazing. So yeah, my, my domain is mainly the garden. I enjoy being out. I live in the garden more than I live in the house, really. I tend to just use the house to sleep in. <laughs> but yes, to answer the question, yes, I do realise how lucky I am, because he's a grafter, and I've always appreciated the fact that he puts in the graft. Yeah, I am a grafter. But I also know that he appreciates how lucky he is as well. <laughs> yeah, I do, so, I do. Yeah. If I sit if I sit down for too long, I, I do actually feel guilty and I feel like I should be doing something in life rather than just wasting it away in a chair. Yes, so next question. Yes, um, I know you've done preview, the previous video on income and different sources of income, but I'm interested to know what are your biggest sources of income and how you manage the leaner times. Also, what jobs did you have before the back race? So obviously you've answered the job one. Before. Yeah, Ford Motor Company in Dagenham. Yeah. 23 years spent working there. First first 10 years or 15 years was fine. 
the last end of it was a bloody nightmare. I couldn't wait to get out. So in terms of um, income, actually, fostering does bring us in a, a, a small income, doesn't it? Yeah, the fostering um, helps bring an income. What we do is we've got a lot of fingers in a lot of different pies. So there is a video actually on um, making money on a small holding. Uh, the link will be down below. Yeah, we've got fingers in a lot of pies, so we. We don't make a lot of money in one particular area, but the fostering does bring in quite a, a big amount, if you call that big. Yeah. Um, but well, yeah, we. Proportionately. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we had the honesty stall outside, selling loads of eggs, which brought in a good income. Sometimes twenty-five pound a week was being earned out there. Mm. Um, we sell stuff on eBay. We go to car boot sales, buy stuff like cheap you've got to work. we're just learning to get a good eye on things what will sell for more yeah that's more my domain really yeah like. that's fixed domain but yeah fingers in a lot of pies yeah. i say don't don't concentrate don't put all your eggs in one basket but yeah i think, <laughs> I think in terms of what the main one is it's probably the, the fostering uh, which isn't something that every small holder can do because you've got a it's, it's not easy work actually um the ebay side of things and actually just being overly frugal and not wasting money actually helps you save money and yeah. you don't need to earn but it much. But to, to run a small holding and make ends meet, I think you will work a lot harder mm. because you're working for yourself than, than if you had like a 9 to 5 job working for some somebody else. But we, we've got the freedom of life. If we want to go out for the day, I don't need permission from my boss or anything like that. But you do work harder on yeah. a small holding. I used to work. I used to be able to get a midday nap, yeah. didn't I, when I worked at the Ford Motor Company? You used to get told off the phone. And you yeah, I used to disappear break. for an hour yeah. in the factory, have, have a midday nap, and then get back to work. I used to get people to cover me. I, I even had my own bed up in the rafters. <laughs> it was fantastic. It was made out of an old Fiesta car seat. But yeah, I work a lot harder now than what I ever done, but I enjoy working hard. Mm. So yeah, that's that question. Okay, so how long have you, oh sorry, from Tim Taylor, how long have you been um, there, like here? Um, what oh. kind of state was house and landing when you arrived? We've been here for seven and a half years now. The cottage was, it was sort of, it was okay-ish, it was livable. But needed a lot, a lot of work. The windows were falling out. It was livable, but not enjoyable. Yeah. <laughs> the first year was absolutely freezing cold here. We've, yeah. we've put in insulation. Oh, we've had floor upstairs floorboards and, and oh, joists beams. in yeah. the beams. Yeah, the beams were falling down. We've had all them replaced. There's been a lot, a lot of hard work to the point where we have spent about a hundred thousand pounds so far renovating this cottage. And when you consider we've done a lot of it ourselves. Yeah, we've well. done a lot of it ourselves. We've had we've had builders come in. There's been nightmares here. We've mainly got just um, decorating to do now and a little bit of loft insulation because I've been building that out and changing the rock wall for Kingspan. But yeah, that's all going to get done this winter. Yeah, in terms yeah. of the garden, when we moved in, it was stinging nettles and bracken were taller. I mean, I'm I'm quite short, but they were taller than me, weren't they? It was a blank canvas. We've yeah. had to design the pens and where to put them and all that. Yeah, which was nice. Yeah. But yes, it was certainly a lot of um, digging over, weeding, turning out, wasn't it? It was. Yeah. And when you're doing that and the house at the same time, it was a big juggling act. This cottage had been on the market for about a year and no one seemed to want to buy it, and it was probably because of the state it was in. Yeah. But I don't mind taking on big projects. Yeah, so anyway. he, the second part of his question, he was saying that he's just moved into a run-down small holding and he's got three acres, so that's a nice, nice That is land. perfect, three acres, <laughs> yes, um, We've only got, we've got three, three quarters, quarters of an yeah. acre here. Um, so it'll give him an idea, he said he's thinking that it will take him about five years to set up. I would say, yes, then double it. Because what, there's always things that come up. Yeah, it depends how bad your cottage is. <laughs> yeah. And actually what you want to do with the land. But yeah, land look... To, Work, working your socks off, you, you just we'll say about seven years working your socks off, yeah. and then you should start getting somewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Jane Bottom has said 
and it's not a question so much, but she liked your leak. She just Otter. 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 Oh, yeah. So, did you mispronounce it? Did I? No. Oh. Hello, oh, Jane. Uh, um, she, I, actually, I remember you, yeah. you commented quite a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. She just watched a video of the outtakes, and she wants to see more of your outtakes. So yeah. What I'll do is I'll try putting um, outtakes onto videos. Not this one because it's getting long enough as it is. Yeah. Um, so P. Burns wants to know um, how did you buy your small holding? We brought our small holding through Right Move. Yeah. We didn't go to like a small holding property company because they tend to inflate the prices we just trawled through there to find somewhere remote with land and we done a lot of saving um, i put in extra hours when i was at the factory and things like that because we knew we wanted a small holding in the future so that's that's how we managed it a lot of hard work yeah. a lot of hours put in we was being frugal as well in our previous home. We was doing sort of urban small holding as well. We had chickens. Most that neighbours discussed. Yeah, we had chickens in a small garden. Luckily, we I had. Goats. Yeah, we, we had the goats and all. Luckily, I'm, I've not got neighbours here to piss off. But oh, to be honest, cat's about to weed my pineapple plant. You, you <laughs> dirty cat. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I've, I've lost my trail of fault now because of the bloody cat. Well, that, that was pretty much in. Uh, uh, yeah, we we yeah. pissed out one of our neighbours off because of um, the animals. I think and all yeah, that that we had to go over there. used the TCP's fence, didn't they? Yeah, we was there first though. He knew, he brought the ass next door to us, and he knew what he was buying, well, and he moved in yeah. and just thought he'd have a bloody good chance moaning. But uh, do you know what? I'll give him what for. That when I knew that we was moving here. I give him what for and had a, had a good old talking to him with, with him yeah. and shut him down. I shut him down straight away. Yeah, yeah funny old boy, wasn't it? Anyway, Hell's Bells. Not into conflicts. <laughs> um, said, what would you do if you won the lottery? I don't play the lottery. No. If I did win the lottery. You couldn't afford the pound. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> Was it £2? Pound, I don't really want to be rich because it'd be like Del Boy, wouldn't it? Where the you, you're so rich that you've not got the challenge in life anymore because you can just use money to do that thing the challenge would be gone in life so i don't really want to be rich at all i would like enough money to get this house renovated once and for all and get a little bit of help in get people in to yeah. help finish it off but that would be it i would give a lot of the money to charity to be honest um just to help others out yeah. I wouldn't tell anyone, I would, like. and I would just pay it forward, as it were. So if, if you found that someone that was struggling, just sort of randomly send some money in the post or something, I wouldn't tell anyone that we had a big lump of cash, because then you could get people yeah. invent and fabricate stories, don't you? Like please, yeah, but I, I don't want to be rich. No. The challenge in life would be gone. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we've got Maria Jackson, who's got quite a few questions, but we're doing one at a time, so... Yeah, you're taking bloody diabolicals there, <laughs> Marie. Be fair, Maria. Yeah. All um, these questions, eh? I <laughs> so, have you started the roof on the well house? No. No, that's been delayed <laughs> yet again because other oh, things come up. Other yeah. things come up that were more important. Yeah. No, that's going to get done. <laughs> so, well, not that soon. We've got another surgery coming up, so it's going to be probably spring now. Um, when will the cider be ready? And the cider's that, ready now to drink. Yeah, and we've been drinking it and enjoying it. It's lovely. It's come out really well. Really pleased with um, that because the other cider come out crap. Yeah, does it have to sit for a while before drinking? In theory, yes. Yes, it does. Yeah, yeah the, the longer you let it mature, the better it tastes, especially with wine. If you can leave a bottle of wine in its bottle for over a year, like homebrew wine, and then taste it, it tastes so much better, it tastes fantastic. The challenge is not drinking it. Yeah, you've got to try it, try and put it in the cupboard and forget about it. So yeah, it does yeah. taste better when you leave it to mature, a bit like me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you have any projects on the go at the moment? Yeah, that's mm. What? Bandstand thing. Oh yeah, we've got like this massive gazebo -y bandstand thing, which is absolutely fantastic. It will be in a future video once I've got it built. Yeah. We got this for nothing. It'll be, it'll be in a video in the future. 
this, this get on, but at what's, the moment that's one of our projects. What's the best thing you've preserved this year? Best thing I've preserved? Well, we've got lots of good things. I've just done some pickled eggs, which I've, I've missed them because we've done them a few years mm -hmm. back and they was lovely. My jams have come out really well. Oh this year. yeah, the jams are, are lovely. Yeah. Apple and raspberry, my favourite. That would be nice. Yeah, the cider probably. I reckon the cider actually. I'll, I'll go with my jams because I've not tried any of the cider. Yet. The cider makes you very merry, <laughs> and you don't tend to get the toxic chemical hangover the next day off of it. Mm. You wake up just feeling a little bit dehydrated. Nothing but a good glass of water will sort that. Of Any plans for the future? What would you like to achieve in the next five years? My my only thing I want to achieve. I'll get the well. I'm going to get the well done. <laughs> get yeah. We'll get that done for definite. Um, yeah. I've got. I'm, I'm building a tree house as well. I've not told any of my subscribers that. Only the only subscribers that know about my tree house is the ones that have come to visit us and stay in our caravan they're the ones that have seen it but I've, I've let it out the bag we're building a proper tree house in the oak tree over the back that'll be in a future video it's getting there it's nearly finished mm. right um from sean trivel trivel dyslexic um where did you get the your apple press and scrap from how much and would you recommend them I would definitely, definitely recommend them because not only can they be used for pressing apples, you could do pears in there yeah, and all fruit. sorts, make some, mm. some nice pear, pear wine, you've got enough grapes. Yeah, you can use any fruit in this, I would highly recommend it. I, we, yeah, we brought them off of eBay years back, yeah. many years back, over seven years ago we brought them. I have no idea what they cost, probably spent about hundred pound ish yeah, I can't remember on what them. It now. Yeah. It's gone. Oh, I had this like this I had this nightmare we wasn't recording, <laughs> but we are. Let me double check. It would have turned off. <laughs> okay, so another one from Hell's Bells. Do you have any plans to get any more animals for your small holding? No, we're cutting down on animals. Yeah. Um, we're cutting down on the number of ducks and we're cutting down on the number of chickens because we want to be... We do want milking goats at some point in the future, but that's a few years into the future, isn't it? It's not that really ties you down, though. No. You've said all the other animals. You've got to milk them every day. You can't even, get, yeah. you can't even go out for the day because mm -hmm. you've got to milk them, otherwise they get mastitis. Yeah, but it's something we, we want with. We're cutting down on the animals here. We're, we're not going to be supplying eggs so much at the front. We're going to be self-sufficient for ourselves. And I'm going to try and get my animals to forage off of the land more and open their pens up even bigger with less animals so we don't have to import too much feed. So less animals here, self-sufficient for ourselves. Not supplying eggs on the stall oh. and I've just done a big spit. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Spray that one again. Sorry, I got distracted there by, yeah. Okay, so what's the Oh no. Right, so I am going to answer this one. I, I've, I've mentioned this in a comment, yeah. didn't I? This is from the Hellsteads. Right. The ones who stitched me up on the dodgy fish, so on the fermented fish. Yeah, thanks for that. To give you a little bit of background on me, I, whenever I'm sitting on the phone having a wee or poo, I normally scroll through YouTube and read all the comments. So I was sitting on the phone doing my wee wees and I come across this comment. Have you ever borrowed someone's spirit and unexpectedly been asked to borrow the badger? <laughs> and I laugh and I laugh and I laugh and people probably wonder why I'm... She couldn't stop laughing. That means <laughs> she was on the toilet because yeah, she could piss herself. Yeah, probably would have yeah. <laughs> So, the truth of the matter is, no. But, years and years ago when we lived somewhere else, I did text someone I knew um, and asked, because she had ferrets, and we had rats down the chicken run, didn't we? Yeah. So I asked if I could borrow the ferret to put down the hole to get rid of the rats. To flush the rats out, yeah. and we put nets on the exit holes and sent the ferret down yeah. one of the holes. It worked. So I got a message back from her saying that, and I won't say the name, but the husband has said that I can borrow the ferret if he can borrow my beaver. Not badger, beaver. <laughs> yeah, so I went out and bought some rat poison. <laughs> but, um... But, um, yeah. 
They were swingers. Yeah, we found they, was, later. Yeah. they was bloody swingers. They even yeah. had um, pampas grass out the front. <laughs> pampas grass is a sign of swingers. They bloody proper swung and all. Not that we say that everyone with pampas grass is swingers, but it is. Um... After, after that, <laughs> we sort of tried to avoid them a bit, really. Yeah. Fucking Bora Bora, the bloody beaver. Liberty. I think I was a little bit more um, what a naive liberty. back then. <laughs> and I grew up in Essex. But yeah. Oh, uh, fighting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we both did. <laughs> right. um, so yeah, so that, that answered that one. Not, oh, um, no. not had someone asked for his badger, but they've asked for my beaver. Your badger? Oh, your badger. It's great. Some, sometimes they call it a badger. Badger, yeah. I think, I think we're overthinking this. I'm overthinking. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Next question. Right. Okay. For Melanie Knight, what are your top five YouTube channels that you follow? Uh, right. Well, I, I constantly chop and change channels. Really, whatever takes my interest. At the moment, I've been watching prepping channels because it, I feel that this world's starting to get a bit of a rougher ride <laughs> um, yeah and just being sort of a little bit prepared out so I've been watching prepping channels one of them is called um, Pixie Prepper well you, you actually go and check her channel out she is living totally off grid she's drinking rainwater that's filtered if if the um, shit hit the fan it, she probably wouldn't notice that much because she's like distanced from civilization. Yeah, check her channel out. Um, who else do I watch? I like motorhoming channels, which is TX uh, Elixir Alex. I, I don't know how to pronounce that one. It's a channel run by someone called Alex, who's a very handy person. <laughs> Links will be in the he fit, yeah. yeah. He, he fixes his motorhome up. He's done so much work on it, and he just I just love what um, like motorhoming the freedom it gives you, and um, even being frugal like motorhoming, you can be very frugal in a motorhome. You use very little water and electric and all that. Um, there's another channel I watch called Be Free, Be Frugal. Um, this lady's channel is, is also amazing. She goes from to the supermarkets um, and buys sort of um, all the discounted food for ten pence and all that, and she puts them all together and makes great food for a fraction of absolutely nothing. But she also does a bit of foraging as well and adds that to the food. Really good channel. I'm, I'm finding lately. I'm watching a lot of. Uh, videos. Yeah. There is two other channels I watch. One is um, Charlie Veach and I'm also watching, it's, it's sort of like a, a journalist channel called GB Resistance. I am sort of only watching them at the moment because I don't normally watch news stuff and like current affairs but I'm only watching them at the moment so I'm sort of, I feel like I'm one step ahead of the game. We don't even need to watch the news do we because if we we don't watch the news, my dad gets upset that we don't know what's going on, so he phones us and tells us. <laughs> so we don't need to. Yeah, I've been, I've been watching a little bit of the news yeah. lately, just so I'm one step ahead of the game of what's going on, and I can find out what I might need to prep on or what I might need to do to stay reasonably comfortable for the future. I think that's it. That's pretty much all the questions. That, that I might have missed some in the comments of comments. If we have missed I'm some, sure. I'm sorry, but yeah, apologies. put them at the bottom of this video and I'll try and answer just the odd couple at the end if I have missed any of the next video, which is going to be this one. I'm going to be yeah. attempting to eat a whole can of this. And on the recommendation of Hellspeed who sent it, I'm going to Stonehenge this weekend, so he's going to be doing it while I'm not here. With <laughs> James. I'm going to make yeah. James try some. But yeah, Sophie and I are going to Stonehenge and um, he is going to be eating that, so I don't have to cut up the smell. <laughs> Actually, I'm, I'm looking forward to trying this. At the end of the day, it's only food, isn't it? How bad can it be? It's actually food. It ain't like a bush tucker trial. Have you not seen the fermented eggs on there? Fermented eggs, yeah. 
I probably will gag, but we'll see. So I think that's it. That brings us to the end of another video. So thank you if you've made it this far. Well done. This, <laughs> this one's a bit of a long video. Over 40 minutes, I think. So yeah, take care. I'll allow you to do the wave at the end. Can we just do it backwards? I'll do the rainbow waves around here. <laughs> Suck the rainbow back in, we'll do it like this. There we go. Goodbye! <laughs> Take care, thanks for watching, and um, just thanks thanks for being a part of this channel. We really do appreciate it. Yeah. Bye. Take care, bye! <laughs>